In section two, we're gonna take a look at what is matter, some ways to look at matter, and how it can be classified and changed from one phase to another. So let's go ahead and get started with just simply what is matter. Matter can be defined as anything that has mass and takes up space. In other words, has volume. We're probably familiar with different states of matter or phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. We can see a picture here that shows solid, liquid, and gas in a very simplified form. But let's take a closer look on the next. So we have on this screen the three states of matter or three phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Relatively speaking to each, of each one, solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. They are lower in energy compared to their liquid and gas counterparts. And they are structured in a very ordered, fixed position sort of way. You can see in the picture that we have here on the right that solids are going to take up this defined space. And the particles here are going to vibrate in place. Um, because they only vibrate in place and don't move more freely, that is why they are lower in energy. If we contrast that to a liquid, liquids have a definite volume but do not have a definite shape. They'll take the shape of their container. Liquids are going to have a moderate amount of energy, which would account for the fact that the particles that make up a liquid are able to be compact but move past one another. I like to think of the liquid particles as being like people at a concert who are really close together. They're, they're moving and sliding past each other. Um, there's no definite shape, but they're able to still move and go throughout. And that's kind of like what a liquid's like. And then finally, you have the gas particles. Gas particles have no definite shape or definite volume, and they are high in energy. That high energy is what accounts for the fact that the gas particles are going to move fast and randomly all over the place. And the particles are so far apart from one another that gases are essentially mostly empty space compared to how much matter is actually in there. So those are the three states of matter. Now when we talk about the different substances changing from one type to another, this is where we get into what's called phase changes. So phase changes are simply going from one state of matter to another. Most of the phase changes you're probably familiar with. For example, if you were going to go from a solid to a liquid, this process is known as melting. The temperature that that happens at is known as the melting point. If you wanted to go the opposite direction and go from liquid to a solid, this is known as freezing. And that would happen at the temperature, which is known as the freezing point. Notice they are the same thing. It's the same temperature, but we actually give them two separate uh, titles or names. Um, take, for instance, water. What is the melting point? What's the temperature that water will go from solid to a liquid? Well, that temperature at which it goes from solid to liquid, melting point, is going to be zero degrees Celsius for water. But what's the temperature that liquid water would freeze back into solid water, or what we'd call ice? That's also zero degrees Celsius. So they are the same temperature, but we would refer to it as the freezing point if the object is freezing. So what about going from liquid to gas? Well, when a liquid goes from, from the liquid phase to the gas phase, that was known as vaporization. Notice it's vaporization, not evaporation. Vaporization is the actual process of liquid particles going to gas particles. Evaporation, just so you know, is when you have a liquid and vaporization is happening at the surface of the liquid. That's specifically known as evaporation. But vaporization is the actual process of going from liquid to gas. If I want to go from gas particles, bring it back down to liquid, this is known as condensing or condensation. And the temperature that these things happen is known as the boiling point. So if we're going to keep with our water example, water will vaporize at 100 degrees Celsius. Notice there's no such thing as a condensation point. We just call it a boiling point. Now, it is possible to go directly from a solid to a gas and vice versa without even passing through the liquid phase. These phase changes are known as sublimation from solid directly to gas or deposition going directly from gas to solid. An example of this would be dry ice. Okay? Dry ice is actually solid carbon dioxide. And when solid carbon dioxide goes to the gas phase, that is known as sublimation. It goes directly from solid to gas. It doesn't go through liquid. And then if we wanted the carbon dioxide gas to go back to solid dry ice, that would be deposition. How this happens, we'll talk about in a later topic. But it's good to be aware of the phase changes in this particular topic. 
Continuing on with the idea of matter is the law of conservation of matter. And this will actually come up a lot in our course. So it's good to be aware of it. So the law of conservation of matter, also known as the law of conservation of mass, they are the same thing, states that mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. And that's important to keep in mind. So a really simplistic uh, visual of this. Suppose that we have our two reactants, uh, so they, before they mix, calcium chloride and sodium sulfate. Notice how they are separated. The flask is capped, so mass cannot escape. The total mass here is 300.23 grams. If we were to pick up the flask, mix the two reactants, and put it back on the flask, provided that it's capped, no matter was allowed to escape, then it should still be the same mass because you can't create matter, you can't destroy matter. It's just going to undergo a certain change. And so law of conservation of matter states that. Now we're going to be talking about a lot of different types of matter in this topic and in this course. And so we need to make sure we're familiar with the terms. There are atoms, elements, molecules, and compounds to name a few. So let's go through each one individually so we understand what each one is. First of all, element. Element is defined as a pure substance that cannot be broken down into two or more simpler substances by chemical means. In other words, elements are the smallest building blocks of matter. Examples of elements could be gold, which has the element symbol Au, sodium, element symbol Na, or oxygen, element symbol O. And actually, if you remember from chemistry previously, oxygen is an example of a diatomic so oxygen in elemental form actually comes as O2. But the same thing applies. Elements are the basic, most fundamental building block of matter, and that is a pure substance. How do you know if you have an element? You just find it on the periodic table. Now, how do we represent elements? Well, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but we're going to talk about it in terms of atoms and molecules. So starting off with an atom. An atom is the smallest quantity of matter that still retains the properties of that matter. So for example, you can have a gold atom, and that would be demonstrated right here. This is a particle representation of a gold atom. And that's probably terrible because that doesn't look gold, that looks silver. But the point is, this sphere, regardless of its color, represents a gold atom. This is the smallest particle of gold you can have while still maintaining the properties of gold. For example, gold has a certain density. It's about, I want to say, 19.3 grams per milliliter. But regardless of what density it has, if I had a block of gold or an atom of gold, they're going to have the same properties. This gold atom is the, the smallest you can get and still retain those properties. But sometimes molecules don't come as just, or some, sorry, sometimes elements don't come as just one atom. Sometimes elements come in terms of two atoms. Like, for example, oxygen. Oxygen, like we talked about above, needs to actually come in the form of O2. So this right here would represent an oxygen molecule. These two atoms bond together to create oxygen molecule. Now molecules are two or more atoms that are chemically bonded together. So as an example, you can see that we've got these two atoms are bonded together. You have a bunch of atoms here bonded together, and you have these three atoms bonded together. In all three examples, those are molecules. Molecules, once again, are defined as substances that have at least two atoms bonded together chemically. Now notice in the definition of a molecule, it doesn't say that the atoms have to be the same or different. It just says that you have at least two atoms. So all three of these images right here, including this one up here as a fourth, are examples of molecules. Even these examples down here are molecules because you have two or more atoms bonded together. Where it gets a little bit more specific is when you look at the definition of a compound. A compound is a pure substance but this time it's composed of two or more separate elements. And you know that they're separate elements from a particle view because of the different color. These are two or more uh, separate elements chemically bonded together that can only be broken down by chemical means. So for example, water, carbon dioxide, or glucose, which have their pictures off here to the right. Looking at these, are they molecules? Yes, because they have different, uh, they have two or more atoms bonded together. Are they compounds? They are also compounds because pictorially I can tell that they are composed of at least two different elements. 
Uh, the red and the white sphere represent different elements bonded together. The red and the black sphere, as well as the white, red, and gray or black sphere, they can't tell, uh, that represents different elements chemically bonded together. So that's the definition of element, atom, molecule, and compound. Continuing on with that, let's look at some more examples here. I mentioned it briefly on the slide before, but there are seven elements that are considered what we would say diatomic. And when we say diatomic, we mean two atoms. What that means is you can't ha these elements cannot exist by themselves. They have to exist in diatomic form. Those elements are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. A way you can uh, know where those are at on the periodic table are demonstrated in this visual with the purple squares being your diatomic elements. So for example, the oxygen that we breathe, the oxygen we breathe is not just O, but in fact it's actually O2. That is actually how na uh, oxygen naturally is uh, occurring. It occurs as O2. But nevertheless, these are all molecules, right? Because molecules are two or more atoms bonded together. Sometimes elements are not diatomic. Sometimes elements can come in various forms. Like for example, phosphorus. Sometimes you could see just a regular phosphorus atom, but other times you might actually see a phosphorus molecule. Same thing with sulfur. Sometimes sulfur comes as just one sulfur atom, but sometimes sulfur can come in this molecular form as well. So those are just examples of molecules, examples of how elements can come in molecular form. We're going to end this section by talking about classifying matter. So matter, remember, is anything that has mass and takes up space or has volume. You can look at matter being classified into two main umbrellas, pure substances and mixtures. A pure substance is an example of matter or sample of matter that has constant composition and has the same chemical makeup and properties. The two types of substances that fall under this category are elements and compounds. So elements and compounds are both classified as pure substances because they have constant composition and they have the same chemical makeup. We can see in these pictures here that all three of these represent pure substances. If I take a look at this uh, first picture and this second picture, you can see that throughout the entire square, it's the same substance. All of these are purple atoms, meaning they're all the same element. All of these, even though there's molecules, you can see it's all the same molecule. And so this would also be a pure substance. Even this last picture is an example of a pure substance. You may think why that is because there's blue and red in there, but do you see how the blue and the red are touching each other? That represents one, um, one substance. And you can see how all of them in here are the same thing, which means this is an example of a pure substance. Um, specifically, this is an example of uh, molecules and compounds, right? But it's all the same thing. Mixtures, on the other hand, is matter or a sample of matter that's composed of at least two or more types of matter that can be separated by physical means, such as evaporation or filtration, things like that. So you can separate mixtures using physical means. Um, the two types of mixtures are homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures, also referred to as a solution, which we'll talk about later, but they are synonymous terms, are uniform in composition. They appear visually the same throughout. An example of a, mi a homogeneous mixture might be salt water. Salt water has two things, salt and water, but if you looked at salt water, you would actually, it would look the same throughout. Whereas a heterogeneous mixture, its composition varies throughout. Like an example of that might be Rocky Road ice cream. Right? If I looked at an a sample of Rocky Road ice cream, I can see that there are different parts to the ice cream. It's not uniform. This picture right here represents a mixture because there are different things. There are red molecules and there are white molecules. So since they are different, that picture would represent a mixture. Here is a schematic visual of what we just talked about. So matter can be defined into two main types, mixtures and pure substances as well as further defined as heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures, and elements and compounds being the pure substances. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some examples of how you can classify matter based on this classification that you see here.